Researchers say astronauts are getting sick on the International Space Station because it's too sterile. They sampled more than 800 surfaces on the station, finding an extreme lack of microbe diversity that's leading to immune issues and skin rashes for astronauts. Rob Knight is the co-author of this study. He's a computational microbiologist at the University of California, San Diego, and joins us now. Rob, thank you for your time. First, I've got to ask, how did you conduct this study? Uh, well, uh, you know, like many scientists, we've always been fascinated by space. And uh, for this study, we uh, collaborated with uh, scientists at JPL and uh, astronauts at uh, NASA to uh, swab hundreds of sites around the International Space Station. So getting all those uh, getting all those swabs all the way up to space and then back to Earth was a tremendous engineering and technical challenge. But the results have just been fascinating. Yeah, they have been. So can you tell us more about what you discovered about this sterile environment, too sterile, uh, in which astronauts are living and working? Absolutely. So initially our, our plan was just to make a really detailed map of all the microbes and all the chemicals that were up there on the International Space Station. And when we put them, when we put, when we put those samples in the context of samples that we've seen uh, across the planet Earth in, uh, in everywhere from huts way out in the rainforest to very sterile environments like uh, hospitals, spacecraft assembly facilities and so on, what we saw was that the International Space Station is at the other end of the extreme of the axis of, uh, of, of um, built environments where uh, where it's uh, you know up there with those highly sterile and clean environments and very far from the uh, very far from the environments that we co-evolved with as humans. And this is not just an issue in theory the effects are being seen what are those effects? Well um, our study just looks at the habitat, not at the astronauts, right? So uh, what we're seeing is very consistent with other studies that we've done in uh, in homes, um, in uh, in hospitals, and that other people have done in uh, environments like schools. That suggests that if you keep the environment too clean, you're you're keeping yourself away from those harmful microbes, but you're also keeping yourself away from beneficial microbes that are really important for keeping your immune system healthy. Well, the astronauts are getting sick and they've seen skin rashes, for example. Do you think this is becoming more apparent because there have been longer stays there at the ISS? Yeah, correct. So the, the longer stays, they're, they're leading not just to, uh, to skin rashes, but also um, also respiratory infections and um, also to other, uh, other, to, uh, other immune problems. And those are all problems that are consistent with what happens in very clean environments on Earth as well. And drilling down into that low diversity you're seeing there in the microbiology, uh, it's not just that, uh, well, it is just coming from humans there. And that's the issue, isn't it? Because it's, it's not coming from the natural world. Why is that important? Uh, that, that's important because our immune systems are really evolved to interact with healthy microbes from healthy animals, healthy plants, healthy soil and so on. And uh, when we take away that input, it's kind of like you have a radio dial um, that's uh, not uh, where, where it's not tuned to any station. So you're just turning up the gain on it. But then whatever noise you have is, uh, is, is going to be really loud and obnoxious when it happens. And in the same way, if we take away the, uh, the natural inputs of microbes that our, uh, that, that our immune systems are expecting, then when we're stewing in our own microbial juices, as it were, with only ourselves as input, uh, you, you kind of get into that feedback loop where the immune system, uh, immune system go out of whack. Rob, how can this be remedied? Well, uh, we need more research to find that out. But essentially what we're thinking is uh, designing ecosystems of microbes that include those inputs that you would get from, from healthy animals, from healthy soil and so on. And keeping that in space could be really important to maintaining human health in space longer term. Um, in terms of what we've found on Earth, especially in comparisons between farm and non-farm -farm families, uh, what we see is exposure to livestock, like especially to cows, is really helpful for keeping people healthy. But it's not very practical to take a cow up into space with you. So we're looking for other solutions. But, uh, you know, that could be supplying the microbes directly. Um, it could be uh, it could be finding ways to colonize smaller animals like mice with those uh, beneficial microbes like you get from a, from a cow or a dog or uh, trying to find a whole way to keep that uh, ecosystem of microbes healthy and self-sustaining in space, along with the human inhabitants. And Rob, I appreciate that you work at the microscopic level, but zooming right out, what does it tell us about moves to inhabit space, do you think? 
Um, I, I think we really have to consider who we're going to bring along with us into space uh, in terms of what animals, what plants and what microbes together are going to make a sustainable biosphere that can, uh, that can, help, uh, can help support health on those longer space missions. And especially if you're talking about things like colonizing Mars, uh, colonizing the moon and so on, um, understanding how to keep people healthy for the long term is going to be really important. Uh, it could also have a, have impact right here on Earth. So, for example, in Antarctic exploration, some of the same issues are more uh, are more common on Antarctic bases, and um, at a more prosaic level, uh, increasing the microbial uh, microbial diversity uh, in your home or in your kids uh, in your kids' school could be really important for keeping them healthy as well. And so, this ongoing research projects in all those areas as well.